Hey guys, how's everyone doing? This is Nick from forexfornoobs.com. Obviously you guys who are here live know that because you're members, but for people who don't know me and are watching on YouTube, uh, are watching this as a recording, this is Nick from forexfornoobs.com. Today is Tuesday the 18th of September 2018. Time is 10am here in the UK. You're looking at an AEDJPY daily chart. Today's analysis, we're going to be looking for price action setups. When I say price action setups, I mean reversals, continuations, all kinds of setups. Uh, yeah, I mean, let's get started. Actually, before we get started, just a quick announcement. I am off on holiday this starting on... My, my, uh, my partner, she keeps all the... She does all the dates and stuff. She just tells me what I got going on. So I can't actually remember the day. It's either Thursday or Friday. One of those two is when I'm leaving. Probably Friday. Uh, and I'm going to be gone uh, pretty much all of next week. So from Friday to pretty much Friday the, the following week. Basically, that means uh, very unlikely to have a uh, price action uh, analysis uh, next week. Uh, uh, I'll be on the forum as always. I'll be active on the forum. I will be trading uh, just at, to a lesser extent because I usually do trade when I'm on holiday. So I'll be posting to the forum, but there won't be any actual analysis videos that week unless I just say, screw it, I'm going to do a video. I might do it. But uh, it won't be live analysis, it won't be streaming to YouTube, it will just be a video that's then uploaded and sent as a recording because uh, I'm not going to do a live stream while I'm on holiday. So, yeah, that's just a quick announcement there. Other than that, guys, let's get started. So, what's going on for this week? Uh, ADJPY. Continuation here, lower time frame continuation. Uh, to be honest, if you entered that, you would have been stopped out from this big spike that came down here yesterday. Uh, I didn't enter. I don't think any of you entered because generally speaking, uh, we wouldn't enter a trade. Wait, sorry, I was looking at this wrong. I just woke up, guys. This is not on continuation. The overall trend is obviously bearish. My bad. This isn't a trade setup at all. For some reason, my mind right there was like, this is a bullish trend, so that's a continuation. But obviously, when you zoom out on the daily, you'll see that uh, this is a, a bearish trend. So yeah, there wouldn't be a continuation here. So it just completely ignore what I just said. My brain is totally not working. Uh, Ash, that is a great question. Is the fourth quarter, statistically speaking, the best for trading? Not really, because December can be kind of crappy, especially the last three weeks of December. But uh, October and November are some of my favorite months. They are... October specifically is a great month. The end of September, which we're in right now, uh, usually really good. Uh, November, the first two weeks are uh, usually great. But as you start closing in on December, things can slow down a little bit. But it varies year to year. So you're not going to have the same uh, thing every year. Some Novembers are great. Sometimes it's great right on, up until the last week of December. So it varies. But the, the last quarter of the year is generally... Uh, really good, at least the first two months of that last quarter. December is very hit and miss. Some Decembers are great, some Decembers just suck. Does that answer your question? Hopefully it does. I'm, I, I think this year might be a good uh, final quarter. Uh, we've just had like such a cool year. Like everything has been trending, Trends allow for like awesome returns. Uh, 
if this pattern keeps up, then I think we're going to have a great year. I think what we're seeing right now in Forex, we're heading... I could be wrong, guys. Could be wrong. This could be just me being hopeful. Well, actually, I'm not really hopeful for this, to be completely honest, because it's kind of scary for the rest of the world. It's good for me, money-wise, but scary for the rest of the world. 2007, 2006, in the Forex market, we had insanely low volatility. GBP, JPY is one of the best examples of this. 2006, 2007, we had very, very low volatility. Then towards 2008, things started picking up. And it started speeding up, speeding up, speeding up. Then things just went crazy. 2009, late 2008, things just went crazy. And volatility in Forex picked up. And it picked up insanely. Some of the best trading years I had was late 2008, early 2009, or even all of 2009. Look at this candle. This is a 2000 pip candle on GUPJPY. All these support resistance areas we have on GUPJPY right now, they were all crossed and then some by a single candle on the daily chart. And it's not like that was rare. Look at the size of these candles. Look at this one. 1,266 pips. That's not even a big one compared to, to the rest of the ones around here. And this went for, for quite some time. Now look at this candle, daily candle, 600 pips. Uh, to me, it feels like we're headed back to, to those kind of uh, conditions in the Forex market. We're not quite there yet, but uh, we had, you know, some, uh, we had a very, very slow year, 2014, very slow, extremely slow. 2015 wasn't that great, but then since then, things have been picking up ramping up ramping up and if it ramps back up to what it was with the exception of this candle which was brexit so that one's just a special event if it ramps back up to what it was in uh 2008 late 2008 then we're in for some crazy crazy uh volatility in the market which will be great for us uh there's loads of profit to be made when there's crazy volatility also if you don't know what you're doing there's lots of profit to be lost uh, or loss, profit to be lost, L lots of uh, money to be lost. Um, I had a point with all this though. Yeah, for those of you who remember 2008, I'm sure most of you do, wasn't only that the forex market was going crazy in volatility, also we were in the middle of the biggest financial crisis since the Great Depression. So... While I'm looking forward to this kind of volatility again, uh, I'm kind of scared that uh, it's only going to happen if we have a uh, a massive, massive recession. And I really don't want that for the world. Sure, I'll make more money on my uh, trading, but uh, I'd rather the world be in a good place and me make less money than the world to fall apart while I make a lot of money. I'm uh, happy enough with where I am right now that I don't need that much more at the cost of the world. Uh, getting uh, getting bad for a lot of people who, uh, I guess, don't really deserve it. So point is, we are seeing a pickup in volatility this year. And that's really exciting. Uh, I'm just kind of worried about what the implications of that are. Uh, I know that's uh, been a very long answer to your question, but uh, I am pretty excited for this final quarter. Uh, with the volatility we've seen this year, if we have that volatility leading into October and November, we're going to see some big trends. And with those big trends, uh, you know, there's a lot of potential for profit. So there you go. Five minute answer. That's what I'm known for. Just like going off on a tangent. But uh, let's get back to the analysis, guys. Are you doing New Zealand uh, bouncing around between these support resistance areas? Bit of a range forming here, maybe, but it's not that great. I'm not going to do anything with that. AUD, USD. Uh, 
Oh, I'm gonna have a few. Uh... Yeah, sorry, I was doing a webinar last night, guys. So I have like a bunch of notes on my charts of uh, setups that uh, I wanted to discuss in that webinar. So I'm just gonna go ahead and delete those. And in the webinar, I wanted to show setups, but I usually mark out setups before the webinar starts. That way I can uh, find them easily and not waste people's time by like going, where is this setup? Uh, I think most of those are gone now. Cool. AUD USD, did we do this one? No, we didn't. Uh, AUD USD, uh, we were looking for a trade here last week, but it didn't really happen. Looks like it's headed up this week. But yeah, there's nothing much going on here, guys. Euro AUD. Nothing much going on here either. Now my chance are loading slow. Euro CAD. Yeah, nothing much going on here. Looks like we might have a slow start to the week. Stop it. Why are you getting all these weird pop-ups? Damn it. All right. Euro GBP. Interesting. Just stuck in between. Support resistance, yeah. Uh, Euro JPY. This one's stalling out on resistance. Looks kind of decent, but I mean, the you, you just can't get a good trade here, can you? It's a... Uh, Nah, we can't do anything with this one, guys. Sorry to say. Euro USD, uh, really excited about Euro USD, guys. Um, this is uh, based on one of the new types of setups we're trading uh, on the. Oh, God, I still have all this stuff all over my chart. Uh. Yeah, where was I? Yeah, so uh, I'm excited about what's happening here. Euro USD. I think this one's going to be a pretty good one for us this week. Uh, this is all traded on the lower time frame. Uh, obviously, these are members only setups, so we're not going to discuss these ones in this webinar because this one's a public webinar. But uh, we will discuss these further in the forum. So do keep an eye on Euro USD. Excited for this. Uh, GUP AUD. Uh, all right, this one has some potential here. Uh, GP AUD, we've already seen a continuation on here. Uh, see this trend, boom, continuation. Wasn't really easy to enter this one, too long of a wick and all that. But now we're seeing a second opportunity for a continuation. Potentially, is it stolen out here? Uh, not yet. It looks like it's just dropping down. Let's see if it stalls out on top of this area. Uh, I mean... It might not even stall out. It might just keep dropping. It might be uh, this trend turning around. We'll keep an eye on it. If it stalls out, we will look for a bullish trade uh, continuation. But yeah, if it doesn't stall out, it doesn't stall out. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's just something we're watching right now. GDP, JPY is stalling at this resistance area. Uh, honestly, I need to redo my support resistance for GDP, JPY. This pair... Uh, The support resistance has just gotten really messy over time because it's such a a weird pair uh, in terms of where it's been bouncing from lately. Like there's an argument to say we could place a support resistance area there, but then, you know, that one doesn't really look that great. This one looks a bit stronger, so on and so forth. Uh, support resistance right now is a bit messy on, on GP, JPY. Uh, in situations like this, what I like to do is just start from scratch. So delete them all and just start from scratch. Anyway, uh, getting to my point, we do have indecision forming here on this resistance area. So price is stolen now. There is potential for a short here on GUP, JPY that might be forming. Uh, so the short would be a pull away from this resistance area back down to the support area. Uh... What I wanna wait for is this daily candle to close. Uh, depending on how this daily candle closes, I'll start looking for a short trade. 
risk to reward ratio is not that great. Uh, 1.75 roughly at the next support area. And then we do have, see that, that uh, area I just removed. While it might not be a major support or res and resistance area, it is definitely a minor one. So price could get stuck on that minor one, which is just uh, at a risk to reward ratio of one. So it's not, not the best of setups. Uh, ideally get in on a retrace. If you're able to get in on a retrace, then you have much better numbers. So I will be looking to do that. I'm gonna watch you PJPY, but I'm not terribly uh, excited for this setup here because yeah, it's gonna be a bit of a tough one to trade. Right, GPUSD. Looks like it might be started an uptrend, guys. It hit those uh, those lows, the 15th of, uh, that it hit back in the 15th of uh, June. So it was a basically a yearly low. Hit that low, it's turning around. It looks like this trend might be over. Looks like we might be seeing an uptrend. Uh, what would be awesome is if GPUSD starts trending up for the rest of this year, because that's going to give us some great opportunities for continuation trades, something like that. So let's keep an eye on this. Uh, what I'm looking for this week with GPUSD, uh, the best situation would be for a price to push up a little bit further, drop down, stall out on top of this support area, and then we could go long. Uh, that would be cool. Uh, but yeah, obviously, that's a long way away from happening. Because we would need this candle to move up. We would need the next daily candle to drop down. So you're looking at at least Thursday, I would say. So yeah, we'll, we'll just revisit this one later in the week. Is it safe to say GPJPY is now trending up? I wouldn't say that. I'd say it's looking like it's starting. It's looking like GBP in general is starting to trend up, but I'd be apprehensive about saying right now that the downtrend is over. Sometimes bearish trends or even bullish, sometimes trends in general, they have big pullbacks and then they continue, right? Uh, so this could be just a big pullback it could pull all the way back to here, then it can continue down. So yeah, I wouldn't say it's over, over, but it's looking like it could be. It's looking like GUP might start trending up. Uh, that being said, I'm still looking for a short there if uh, I can get one. Um, we'll just see how this closes out. Uh, sorry, we'll see how this candle closes and we'll see what the next one does. Uh, and GUP USD, we'll see what happens here if it drops back down how we might be able to, to get in long, might be the start of a bullish trend, that'd be cool. New Zealand USD, this one's, yeah, I've been waiting for a continuation here, but I, it's just, it's not gonna happen. It's getting less and less likely for it, for this to happen. Um, cool thing with New Zealand USD is it's been trending down for a while. So there's been loads of continuations on the way down, but, uh, the longer a pair trends, the less likely that it's going to continue to trend, essentially, because the longer a trend lives, the more likely it's going to die. So it looks like this continuation right now is not going to happen. It doesn't mean the trend's over. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying this continuation specifically is not going to happen. It could go back up to here and then continue down. That's totally possible. Uh, but yeah, this, this continuation... Uh, not going to happen. With New Zealand USD, uh, let's, yeah, we're just going to wait and see. There's nothing, no actual setup going on there. There's not much going on to, to kick off the week. It's a boring start to the week. USD CADs pushed away from support, but not doing much. USD CHF trending down. For those of you who entered that new setup, that we've uh, discussed the swing trading setup. We're going to be holding on to this one for a few weeks. I'm sure you're doing good. I am kicking myself for missing that one. That news release. I was just waiting for a good entry and then that news release caused that massive drop. I 
I'm glad you guys got in though. A lot of you guys got in. I am really glad that you guys were able to catch it, even though I screwed this one up. I'm just like, so like the thing with these new setups is that they are so rare. You don't get many of these ones, but they're so good. So I usually don't really care if I miss a trade, but this one kind of stings because these setups aren't common. So I've missed out on what I think is going to be a very good opportunity where USDCHF is going to trend down to at the very least this support area, but possibly this support area and even possibly this support area. I've missed out on an opportunity like that because I was a bit greedy with my entry. When I say greedy with my entry, I was like, I want to, I think this is going to retrace. I want to get in at a better entry when I could have just got in short here and being cool, I wanted to get in short when it pulled back up. Greedy with my entry, missed out on what is already shaping up to be a great trade, but what uh, has potential to get down to here and like I said, down to there. Although, you know, down to there is, is a big maybe, but down to here, I think very likely. Will I consider getting in the next boy and nope, I, I've missed this trade. The entry was up here. That's where the entry was. Getting in down here, I'm getting in how late? That's uh quite a way. 150 pips late. So the 180 pips it probably would be, something like that. Nope. Because once it hits down here, it could move sideways for a few weeks. It could turn around and this trade might need to be exited early. Uh, entering down here is just way, way, way riskier. Missed the setup, but I just got to deal with that. USD JPY. I don't know what's going on with my chance lately. They just, look, it's not, I can't expand it anymore. What the hell? Trading view is great, but you know, sometimes it, it gets a little buggy. There we go. USD JPY, nothing much going on there, guys. Uh, Cat CHF, I don't trade that. That's just there. New Zealand JPY, whoever, uh, there was someone who got into a long trade here. That's going well for you guys. I'm glad it's working out. Whoever's still in this one, good trade. Awesome work there. Another one I missed. Last week was not a great week for me. Uh, I ended up failing... Uh, sorry, not failing. That's the wrong word. Negative last week. Uh, did not make profit. Lost money last week in my trading. Last week was a horror week for me. Pretty much everything I touched went wrong. Uh, not only on uh, the larger time frames, also on my scalping. My scalping, in theory, should have a win rate of about 50%. That doesn't sound good, but the risk to reward ratio is one to three. So 50% is extremely profitable. In theory, should have a, a win a ratio of 50%, maybe even a bit less, maybe 45%. But I've been pulling off over 60% with it. I don't know how, but most of the year, I've been firmly over 60%, which is crazy with a one to three risk to reward ratio, crazy. This is not me bragging. I'm just, this is just the facts. I'm expecting 45, 50%. I've been doing 60%. Been a really good year in terms of scalping. Awesome. Last week, 0%. Every trade, a loss. That's going to take down my average. Now, it's one week in the scope of an entire year. It doesn't really matter money-wise, still way up, but God, last week was bad. 
It's just one of those weeks where everything fails. Eh, what can you do? And then I missed a bunch of setups. Have I stopped? No, I, I don't do that anymore. I used to stop if I've had a bad week, but these days I just keep trading. I mean, I, I am technically going to stop because I'm going to have a holiday. Uh, but even there, I'm probably going to be trading. But I won't be scalping because scalping is too intense. Uh, and I won't be doing that on holiday. So scalping, I am going to stop uh, probably this. I probably won't be scalping. But it's not because of the losses. Uh, if I wasn't going on holiday, then I would just be scalping uh, this week too. Uh, I don't really stop anymore. Uh, if you're a new trader, there is some value in taking a break after a bad week just to kind of reset your mind. But I've been trading long enough that I don't really care about bad weeks that much. If I have a bad week, I have a bad week. It's just the reality of the game. Uh, I'll just keep trading because the next week might be a a week where I don't take any losses, where I just get nothing but wins. Uh, you know, that's happened before. Uh, so yeah, I just keep trading. Yeah, Ash, I missed a lot of the good trades last week. That's the other thing. So not only did I take a bunch of bad trades, I missed a lot of the good trades. So it's like everything was uh, was off last week. I know you guys caught a lot of great trades. You guys did well. A lot of you, not everyone. I mean, obviously, a lot of you guys did well. A lot of you guys took some really great trades. I missed the good ones. I missed this New Zealand JPY one. Well, no, I didn't miss it. I literally said I'd rather go with the New Zealand USD short than the New Zealand JPY long. And uh, look how that worked out for me. <laughs> If I got into this New Zealand JPY long, I'd be like, yay, great trade. But yeah, that's just the reality of trading. You can't be, uh, you can't be doing fantastic every single week. But for those of you who are new, just, you need to understand that even traders who've been doing this for a long time, we all have our failed weeks. We all have, sometimes you have two weeks in a row where you don't make money. And that's just the reality of trading. You're not gonna make profit every single week. Some weeks you're gonna suck. Hey, some months, you can have a whole month where you're negative. And that's just the reality of trading. That's just how it works. The difference between good traders and bad traders is that bad traders give up or they say, oh, this strategy isn't working. I'm going to make changes to this strategy. I'm going to find a new strategy. Um, and that's that's a really bad one because every time they have a few bad weeks in a row, they go and switch their strategy, not realizing that not every n there is no such thing as a strategy that's profitable every single week of the year. There's no such thing. Uh, and there's no such thing as a trader that's profitable every week of the year. Uh it's just not how how trading works. So you just have to take the bad weeks as they come and keep trading because the next the next good week is just around the corner. You just got to keep trading. I'm not saying don't take a one week break if you want to. That's fine. But uh, if that gets you back into the right uh, mindset to trade, the right headspace, if you want to just take a week to relax, chill out, take a break from the charts, cool. I personally don't need that anymore, but I've been doing this for so long at this point that that it's just not required. But if you're new, you might need that. That's that's a completely fine to do. But uh, yeah, you don't give up. Ash is a good example of that. I call him Ash, but Zygamantis is uh, who I'm referring to when I say Ash. Ash has been just, he's been at it for two years. Uh, he's gone through a lot of crappy periods but uh, he's been very persistent. Persistence is uh, is key in trading. But anyway, guys, I think that wraps it up for today's analysis. Uh, let's do just a very quick summary. EURUSD, uh, we're looking for one hour, 30 minute chart setups here. Uh, EURUSD, uh, sorry, I meant to say GBP AUD. 
Uh, we're looking for a potential continuation here, but I mean, this does look like it's probably gonna keep moving down. Let's just see what happens if it stalls out on top of the support area. It could do, it might not do. Uh, GPJPY stalling out on resistance. We're gonna look for a potential short trade here. GPJPY, uh, GPUSD. Uh, yeah, this one, we're just waiting for it to fall back down. So this one's gonna take a little while uh, if it even does what we want it to do. Uh, so yeah, not really that much going on to kick off this week, guys. Uh, there'll be some analysis tomorrow, uh, and hopefully there's some, some more stuff going on tomorrow. So thank you guys for attending, uh, and I'll see you tomorrow.